In this video, we're going to learn how to run MPT 30 billion model on CPU. Yes, not GPU, just CPU. You need to have good amount of RAM, like at least 32 GB for this to work completely fine. Like when I tried it on my 32 GB machine, even then it was too slow, but I still decided to put out this tutorial for people, anybody who has a really powerful GPU and they want to try it out. And also the same approach can be used for any other model. The way we are going to run MPT 30 billion parameter model is using a quantized model. We are going to use the four bit quantized model. That is something that has been already uploaded to Hugging Face Model Hub. So we don't have to do a lot of technical things. We're going to simply use an open source project and then run the same thing. So we are not going to do any kind of coding or any modification until unless it is required. And I'll tell you exactly where you need to make changes that will help you do certain changes. First of all, to start with, to begin with this setup, you need to have terminal access or shell access or command prompt access. Right now I'm going to show you the show you this on Mac, but this should be very well applicable on Linux as well. If you have a, you know, like a common Linux distro, but if you are on windows, most likely you should be able to understand how this works. And I'll also tell you while, you know, while on the video, I'll also tell you the nuances, what kind of changes that you have to make so that if possibly you encounter an error, you might know how to resolve it. To start with, we want to clone this repository. This repository says MPT 30 billion inference code using CPU. I link this repository in the YouTube description. This is giving us the foundation to run the entire code. This is all the utility scripts under the hood. This repository downloads a GGML model from Hugging Face Model Hub. This model has been uploaded by the one and only the bloke. So the bloke has uploaded the 30 billion chat GGML model, which is like a 19 gig model. So this 19 gig model is going to be downloaded. It's like a quantized four bit model. And we are going to use another library called C transformers that lets us run C ggml code in python so this is this is the basic foundation we are going to first clone the repository so the way we clone the repository is copy the repository url the way you, you you're going to clone the repository is git clone and space the repository link and then once you paste that that is going to clone the repository once the repository is successfully cloned at this point we have all the utility scripts that we need to run the code so clear the environment after we have cloned the repository if you do not know how to clone the repository using terminal, just like I did, you can simply go here, here and download the repository as well. You can go to your GitHub, click here and then download it as zip, unzip it and then go inside the repository as well. But it's very important for you to know how to use terminal if you're going to do this kind of stuff. So after you have you after you have downloaded or cloned the repository, the next thing that you need to do is you need to enter into the repository. Now CD MPT 30 billion inference that will take you inside the repository. Previously, let's say you were on your home folder. Now you downloaded the repository on your home folder. That folder is going to be there and you have to enter inside that folder. And that's why you have entered inside the MPT 30 billion inference folder. Let me do LS so that you know what all files we have. License, readme, download model, inference, media requirements. That's it. And you can go here and then see the same thing. You have got the exact same, like, of course, after we have entered the folder, as you can see that we have uh, currently entered the folder and uh, understood that everything has been downloaded well. The next thing that we need to do is we need to activate our virtual environment. For you to activate the virtual environment, you're going to copy this code and then you're going to run it. When you're going to run this, just make sure that depending upon your Python environment on your computer, you might have to make changes to this code. For example, uh, on my machine, on my machine, if I say Python, it will invoke Python less than three. So I always have to say Python three here. So I'm going to say Python three here just to make sure that it, it works fine. So first of all, before even you do this thing, make sure you have the right version of Python installed. The most advisable is like Python greater than Python 3.10 and also make sure what is the invoke command that op that invokes or uh, that executes the right Python version on your computer if you happen to have multiple Python versions. So that's the important thing. So I have changed this code from Python to Python three, and then I'm going to activate the virtual environment. It's going to take a couple of minutes. But also, it's a very good practice. You can skip this um, completely fine. It will still work. But if you do this thing, everything they're going to install is going to stay within this virtual environment, which is a really good practice so that you don't mess up things. At this point, we have successfully installed or activated the virtual environment. Once you activate the virtual environment, you would see a new change in the way your terminal is showing you things. Previously, it said MPT 30 billion inference and on main because you know, Git is installed. 
But now it actually says that folder name, which is a virtual environment name inside, you know, before you could start typing anything. So that means you are inside your virtual environment and that has been successfully activated. Now at this point, you need to go ahead and install all the required or the required li libraries. And what are those required libraries? If you go ahead and then see here, you know that there are only two required libraries, C transformers and transformers. So the way you do is pip install. If your computer again works with pip in my computer, pip is mapped with Python less than three. So I have to do pip three. So pip three install dash r requirements.txt. Once I do this thing, as you can see, it's going to install the required library, which in this case, C transformers and transformers. Once these two libraries are installed, the next step for us is to actually download the model. When we are going to download the model, once again, like I said, the model is going to be about 19 gig. As you can see here, the model is about 19 gig. So what I have done personally is instead of downloading using the script, I have separately downloaded the model because this is something that I can easily control with my browser. So I went to this hugging face link and clicked download here to download the ggml model, which is like a dot bin file. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to put it in the right spot. So you can either invoke the script Python three. Once again, remember Python three download underscore model dot pi and then let it download the model in itself, which will actually tell you how long it's going to take. So it's going to start downloading the model or you can cancel this if you have already got the model in itself. So what you can do is open dot and then you can actually create a folder here, which is to say models and inside that folder you can copy and paste the file that you have got already downloaded, which is a 19 gig file. So after you have done this thing at this point, like you can assume that, you know, you have got, let's say once again, to show you, you have got the root folder, the, the main folder where everything is there, the virtual environment, everything is there. Then you have got the models folder inside the models folder. You have got the model in itself and download underscore model is something that we either can use or not. But our main thing is the inference dot pi. One of the important things that you might want to change here is system prompt. Like if you want to make any system prompt change, for example, you want a coding prompt. You don't want like a general, uh, sorry, you want a coding assistant, not like a general assistant, then you can go ahead and then play with the system prompt. So that's something that you need to do. And it also gives you the user prefix. You don't want it to output a lot of words, then you can actually adjust the new tokens. Uh, if you're completely fine with that next, go ahead, Python three inference dot pi. When you run Python three inference dot five, it's going to load the files. First of all, as you can see, it's fetching the files. Once it starts fetching the file, it's going to actually show you the interface where you can just ask question. Like it's going to give you the option where you can ask question and it can answer. This process will take a little bit of time. And uh, that's something that you need to keep in mind. As you can see, now it's asking us to enter uh, whatever the user would want to enter. I am sad. What do you think? Just a question. So the assistant ultimately will start typing it. As you can see, it started typing. It uh, took maybe like a minute for me. Um, I'm sorry to hear that you are feeling sad. Is there anything in particular that that is causing you to feel this way? And it's, it's typing more. Or would you like to talk about your feelings? Wow. Sometimes it can be helpful to express your emotions and talk about them with someone. I am here to listen and offer support if you need it. That's it. Okay. Now it's, now it's asking me to do something. Okay, fine. Just completely out of something. So I'm going to just say 12 plus two and then send it. I'm going to expect it to do the calculation. Um, the, I've seen the demos, uh, it does calculation pretty decently. And we have also seen that MPT is quite good at programming. I'm not asking any programming questions at this point because I, I, don't, I don't want to bore you with the questions that I'm going to ask here. The point here is that we have successfully managed to run an MPT 30 billion parameter model on a 32 GB machine. Um, the RAM is 32 GB and uh, it's, it's not even an M1 machine, it's an Intel Mac. And as you can see, that it has successfully managed to generate the text. Now it's generating the answer to 12 plus two is equal to 14. Cool. It seems that the model is working fine. It's a, it's a wonderful time to be. And uh, thanks to the bloke for the model and uh, thanks to Anton for making this 
utility script available for us to use it and all these information will be in the youtube description for you to play around with this just to quickly summarize there are certain things that you need to make sure that you have got first of all you need to make sure that you have got the right version of python installed second of all just the trade off between python python 3 that's something that you need to be clear about and um, even before that like you need to know how to clone the repository after you do all these things uh, you don't have to use this script to download the model you can do it but if you don't want to do it download the model yourself manually keep it in a folder and then copy paste it here and then finally run the inference script which is quite amazing let me know if you would like to see like a web application right now it is all terminal based application if you would like to see a web application i can either spin up a gradio or a streamlit application and share it with you I hope this video was helpful to you in learning how to run MPT 30 billion parameter model on a CPU. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.